Hello, welcome to my second video on the channel. It's going to be a overview of the WE MP5. Similarly to my last video, it's going to be unedited, unscripted, uh, fairly unprofessional. I'm just going to give you my my opinion as not an expert, but a keen airsofter and someone who's uh, had quite a bit of experience on this particular gun so far. So we'll start then in typical fashion with the front Excuse the camera angles, I'm filming on an iPhone. So at the front, I bought this this second hand. Um, it would normally come with a QD flash hider at the front, which would cover this trilog, but mine never came with it, and I've never really felt the need to, to get it. We've got the sling mount, obviously. Uh, I put a key ring on there, but that's a tag to show um, Chrono. There's a keyring there i use that keyring so i can run a sa80 sling um standard issue sling for british army i have a lot of those lying around and i find that they're almost universal to most things if you can get some kind of loop in there to attach it that's just me it's not it's not necessarily the proper authentic way of doing things but that's that's how i do it one of the top things on the we apache over its vfc counterparts as many people have pointed out is the steel cocking tube in here it's all steel it's all strong which means you can quite happily if i take the mag out you can quite happily do the old hk slap till your heart's desire which is good it's what you want it's what you buy these things for really the body itself is all steel it's all stamped steel it's of good quality in my opinion i've this is a used secondhand gun. I've no idea how old it is, but I'm going to consider fairly old. And it's still looking pretty good. There's some wears and tears, some scratches. You know, I don't, I don't baby my guns when I go out and play. I treat them quite roughly, and it's held up very well. So as far as durability is concerned, I'd say absolutely brilliant. Can't go far wrong with it. The I went for the A3 version, which has the sliding stock as you can see there's a spring release on the rear that you depress and then you can slide the stock in and out there's a few latching positions my spring itself that works with the lock is a little bit worn i think because the positions aren't as positive as you'd like them to be but fresh out of the box they would be but it does the job it'll lock in i've never had any real problem with it but it's something to look out for experiences will vary depending on the age of the of the mp5 you manage to come across they are very hard to source new here in the uk so secondhand websites are usually the way forward the body is polymer uh, it's a nice quality polymer it's I'd say if you've got any experience with the WG36s, I'd say it's of equal quality, if not slightly higher. Very, very solid, very robust. No, no problems there at all. It feels good. It's got a nice texturing to it. I have nothing bad to say about the polymer. It's, it's not your cheap plastic. It's good quality molded, molded polymer. Under the front handguard is the hop adjuster which is a standard dial. I'll get rid of this pin and I'll show. Under there, that is your hop up. Clockwise for more, anti-clockwise for less. Very simple, very effective. I found it to work well. These handguards can be a little bit difficult to do, especially one-handed, but bear with me, there we are. lock in with a single pin at the front and then get that to line up maybe not excuse me doing this one-handed is slightly awkward there we go there she goes just like that the sides are a standard hk style rotating with different rear windows 
I mean, for me personally, in airsoft, you don't particularly need to line up iron sights that much. You tend to look at the trajectory of the round. So they look the part, but as far as usefulness goes, I mean, I'll leave that up to you. You've got a single three round burst and fully automatic. Thankfully for me, the single three round burst and full auto all work. Um, you do hear online that the three round burst can go um, with extended use. Luckily, I've not experienced that, but it may be something to consider. This is obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but a, a talking point with WE gas blower back guns is that the trigger mechanisms can be a little bit soft and a little bit fragile, which I would have to say is fairly accurate. I've got a G3A3 as well as this, uh, and unfortunately, just recently, the hammer broke on that because uh, it is quite weak metal. It's easy to replace with steel parts, as is this WE Apache, uh, but it's definitely something to consider if you're looking at buying one in comparison to maybe the BFC, which I understand's got a slightly higher quality internals. But I've had no problem with this at all. As far as magazines go, it will come with, depending on the year, I'll set that down over there. Depending on the year, it will come with Either this quite damaged looking example, but a, a straight 45 round gas bag. And then there's also these, which are also 45 rounds, but slightly more bent. People refer to them as the banana mag. They are actually the same size, regardless of how it looks on film. They both have 45 rounds, but this one's bends to a slightly more extreme angle. I've never had a problem with it, but this is the straighter one. And this is the more bent version. The purists out there don't really like the bend. They say it's slightly unrealistic. For me, I really have no problem with it. It does the job, looks good. And finding magazines for this can be fairly difficult and fairly expensive. So you take what you can get, don't you really? As far as my experience playing, um, it's been very good. It's very snappy. I'll put some gas in. So you can see there's nothing in the mag, so it will just dry fire. We've got nice trigger response. Nice and snappy. Three round burst there. And I'll gas. But yeah, it shoots, performs very well. I'd say it's, I mean, with gas gold blowback guns, as many of you will know and appreciate, the range and performance can be very weather dependent. If you go on a, a nice warm day, it's going to be fantastic. But we don't really, I don't really run gas blowback guns for their performance. If you wanted pure performance, you'd get an AAG, wouldn't you? Like, AGs are for winning. You 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 know you've got a much higher round capacity and often better performance at range with an AEG, but there's something to be said for the satisfying kick that you get from a gas blowback gun and the uh, the realistic operations really the selling point in my opinion. I do have AGs that I'll swap to mid game if they if I feel like I need to, but things like this are just just good fun and more exciting to use. If it's your first and only airsoft weapon, I wouldn't recommend going for gas blowbacks. Um, I'd say get a solid AAG first and then branch out into something like this because they are extremely expensive. I mean, even even used an MP5 like this from WE, WE will cost around £300 probably in the UK secondhand, somewhere thereabouts, depending on how many mags you get. Those mags are maybe 40 rounds each, 40 pounds each. And then that's only 45 rounds capacity per mag. So I've personally got four. Uh, I find that that's just enough, but you know, you've got to enjoy doing reloads mid game for that to be something you'd be interested in. And that's it really. As far as FPS goes, it is, it does shoot quite hot. Um, again, depending on your field, you may have problems with it. There are, there are 
um, end pass valves you can install into the into the bolt carrier that can adjust FBS. I haven't got one in here myself. I found it to be okay. My sight limit's at three fifty. I tend to tend to do just fine then, depending on depending on temperature. But it is definitely something to look out for for these WE Apaches. But yeah, other than that, it's very solidly built. It's of accurate weight and size. Quite heavy, quite solid, very satisfying. Would recommend. I have got, as I mentioned, the um, G3A3. Once that's up and running again, I will probably do a review slash overview on that as well, because I've got some things to say about that. But yeah, overall, good bit of kit. It's good fun, satisfying to use. I would like to run through chronos and accuracy shooting tests, but I just haven't got the the space or the room for that at home, unfortunately. So if anyone's interested, I may start to video my experiences out on the field uh, and demonstrate some of these guns' performances out there in the field uh, in a game. Uh, and I can start looking at chrono results and stuff like that if you're interested. But there are a lot of videos out there that will show you that already. I'm just kind of giving a honest review from a player more than you know a content creator or someone trying to sell you something this is just an honest overview of the kit that i happen to own thanks very much if you watched my previous video on the desert eagle thanks for that appreciate the views um check that out if you're interested coming up in the future i'll probably do a review of a uh, gas usp um umrex usp i've got which is uh, a CO2 gun. It's got a leaky mag at the moment, but once that's up and running, I'll put that up here. And then same with the G3A3. I'll, um, I'll, I'll stick that up here as well if there's any interest. Quick overview. Let me know if there's anything more you want to see or if something you've missed or if you've got any questions, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Thanks again. Bye-bye.